For the longest time, the 15 inch 2015 MacBook Pro was the king. This thing was the best value, most sought after Mac out there, and I have made tons of videos on it over the years. But the question is, now that Apple Silicon is established and in its second generation, and now that this thing is eight years old, is it still good? Are the things that made this MacBook Pro so popular even relevant today in 2023? Well, today we're gonna unpack this because I think it's actually a pretty complex issue. But first, let's get a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Oprah the ultimate web browser that comes packed with a free VPN, ad blocker, music player, messenger integration, and even AI assistant all built in. In just a few clicks, you can set up Opera One with your preferred browser look, sync your browser data, and connect messengers. The intuitive layout puts tabs front and center with easy access to your sidebar. In here, you'll find quick access to your favorite messaging applications and social media pop-ups like Twitter. And you'll also find access to Aria, Opera's browsing AI assistant. Ask it questions or just highlight text on a page and contextual prompts will pop up to provide more information. Access Aria through the sidebar, AI highlight, or by pressing command slash on Mac. And best of all, Aria is web connected, which means it has access to current up-to-date information. When you open related tabs, Opera automatically creates tab islands, which group them together and keep your browsing organized. Add tabs to an island by simply dragging it in. It's super intuitive and packed with features to make your browsing experience easy and fun. To learn more and get started today, check out the links in the description below to download Opera One and get started right now. Big thanks to Opera for sponsoring, and now let's get back to the video. All right, now I know that a couple of you out there are gonna be wondering what the hype is all about. Why is everyone obsessed with the 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro? After all, it is just a spec bump and it has the exact same Haswell series processors as the previous two versions. The late 2013, mid 2014, and this mid 2015 all have fourth gen Intel chips. So this isn't any faster than those. In fact, the only major differences that you would actually notice is the 2015 introduced the force touch trackpad, which I think we would all agree is phenomenal. And it has a faster GPU, an AMD Radeon R9 M370X, which was a pretty solid bump in 2015. It's much faster than the older Kepler NVIDIA GPUs that Apple was using, but obviously now, I mean, it, it's not exactly powerful. Even in the Intel days, there were more powerful GPUs in Apple laptops. So why is this machine so exciting? Well, to be brutally honest with you, <laughs> the reason that this thing was so good is because the later MacBook Pros were so bad. Touch bar generation was bad. Yeah, people did not like the 2016 generation MacBooks. They were keeping their unibody MacBooks, these, or switching to Windows so they wouldn't have to buy one of those. It was bad. So it wasn't that there was some crazy amazing feature of the 2015. It just had a usable keyboard. It had ports and MagSafe, which was so good that Apple just brought it back recently. This thing even has upgradable storage, which is more than you could say for any Mac ever since. Although now that I mention it, technically you could upgrade the SSD in the 2017 Function Keys base model 13 inch MacBook Pro, but that thing sucked anyway, so no one really cared. So the reason this was popular was simply because it was the last MacBook that came out before Apple ruined them. The problem is, it's not 2019 anymore. We now have Apple Silicon, and Apple answered a lot of the problems that we had with those older generation MacBook Pros. And so when you compare this to the current context, a lot of those benefits aren't really benefits anymore. Number one, performance. This thing was very close in performance to the 2016, 17, and even 2018 MacBooks. By the time the 2019s came along and Apple introduced eight core i9s, they were about twice as fast as this quad core i7. However, those machines were $4,000, whereas this was at that point, maybe a thousand or 800. So you were getting half the performance for one fifth the price. 
that's a great value still. But now in 2023, you can buy an M1 or an M2 MacBook Air, which are again, about twice the performance, but they're sometimes less than twice the price. And that's just talking about raw performance. There's way more that goes into Apple Silicon. I mean, we're talking battery life. We're talking quietness. I mean, I ran Cinebench R23 and the score was fine, but listen to it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to argue that you should save $300 to get half the performance and a whole bunch of extra fan noise and it's gonna run way hotter than Apple Silicon and you're gonna get worse battery life. Not to mention that now USB-C has become a more accepted standard. So whereas the ports on this thing used to be a benefit, now I would argue that the lack of USB-C does detract somewhat from the experience. Now don't get me wrong, none of this is to say that the 2015 has gotten worse. It is still one of the best Intel Macs ever made, but the problem is, Context is everything. What made this popular was that the contextual machines were worse, but now for the price, it's not as good a value anymore. In my last video, we went on eBay and examined some listings for these 2015 Retina MacBook Pros. And the problem is that if you want to get a good one, you're going to have to spend more than $300. Everything that I've found under 300 has issues with the battery or a whole bunch of dents or the screen coating is peeling off, which is very common on these MacBooks. And if you're saving $300 compared to Apple Silicon, but you're getting a beat up old machine with an Intel processor that isn't supported under Mac OS anymore, I, that's not really that appealing. So it really is all about the pricing. If you could find a machine like mine, which is in very good condition with a one terabyte SSD, if you could get these for $250, I would say that's a really good value. It doesn't really have to compete with Apple Silicon at $250. But given that if I were to try to sell this on eBay, I could probably get 400 for it. I don't think that is worth doing. It's like this weird uncanny valley where $400 isn't gonna get you an Apple Silicon machine, but it's close enough that it makes you not wanna buy something with Intel. A couple months ago, I bought a 2013 15 inch MacBook Pro for literally $100 and all it needed was an SSD. And at that price point, I don't care what the specs are. I don't care if it's slow or if it runs Intel. I just want a working computer at that price. And if it has a retina display, well, even better. But at 400, that's a bit much for those compromises. So unfortunately, I think that means that our time might be up here. The 2015 is almost a 10 year old MacBook at this point, and it's running Intel, which means that it's, it's already not going to be as exciting as anything new. So the 2015 had a really good run. It was like six years where this was one of the best machines that you could buy. But I think the time has finally come to retire it. Now, I think the best MacBook that you could buy, hands down overall, is an M1 MacBook Air. You can get them refurbished or even brand new for seven or $800. And there's just really nothing better at that price point. In fact, that does give me an idea. Should I make a video where I go on eBay and try to buy the cheapest M1 MacBook Air that I can find? I do wonder if we could find a decent one for less than $500. Let me know down below if you'd like to see that video. And I'm also very curious about your thoughts on the 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro. I know that a lot of you guys really love these machines and will defend them to the death. So I'm curious to hear whether you agree. It's definitely an interesting time. And I think that uh, there's not really a, a strong mid-range MacBook right now. You can find stuff that's like really cheap, that's pretty decent. And you can find stuff for $1,000 with Apple Silicon all day long. But if you want something in the middle, five or 600 bucks, it's really tough. It's hard to recommend buying an Intel Mac, but maybe it's not exactly affordable to get Apple Silicon at that price point. I don't know, it's tough. Maybe, maybe things will shake out differently as the market adjusts, but right now, I think that's where we're at. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and of course, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.